from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube, covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, joined with my co-host Jim Kobielis, and we're here with theCUBE at DockerCon 2017. When I talked to John Furrier, he said, Stu, you know, at DockerCon, we're going to get Solomon Hikes on, founder, we're going to get Ben, ben Golub, the CEO, and we're also, of course, going to get Mariana Tessel, who is the <laughs> EVP of Strategic Development. So, Mariana, thank, it's, you. thank you for having us back again, and you know, we've been having a great event. Uh, how are everything with you? Thank you, first of all. Yeah. Um, it's it's great, great. I mean, this is the second day of DockerCon. I think we had a great great set of announcement um, yesterday, and amazing set of announcement uh, today as well. So it's it's really going uh, great. And you know, I've been um, roaming the the, um, the exhibit all, and actually, a couple of people said this is one of the best shows they. Uh, been part of and that this very engaged audience is great. It's great to hear. Yeah, from uh, the keynote yesterday, the word that stuck out to me is really scaling. You know, so you talk about scaling deployment, just kind of scaling the ecosystem and the show itself. So you know, I was at that <laughs> first DockerCon when we were like wedged in that hotel room. As Ben joked, you know, we had a hundred people more than we told the fire marshal because <laughs> it was tight. The cubes usually a little bit smaller footprint than we have at some other shows, but. Austin, first of all, you pick great locations. I mean, San Francisco, you know, Seattle, here. Looking forward to, have we announced yet where next year's is? Um, but I don't think we announced that yet. yet. Usually it happens in the afternoon. Okay, yeah. um, but you know, here in Austin, so you know, talk to us a little bit about so some of those announcements, the stuff that you, you know, you're excited about with growing the ecosystem. You know, I'm going to continue the theme you started with scale, and obviously, like you said, a, a lot of things are changing, but what, what and, and scaling, one of the things we've noticed that uh, more and more uh, companies and enterprises have really started to use that, to use us more in scale, and more in production, more apps, uh, more of that going on. And one of the trends we've uh, noticed that actually Ben covered on stage today is uh, that there's not just kind of the bleeding edge uh, development and all new apps, web apps, but actually we're starting to see um, more of a traditional apps um, coming on board as well, and uh, you know, more traditional ops saying, wait a second, I want those benefits as well. I don't know that I want to go all the way to the extreme of uh, you know rewriting my code and going for to microservices, but I can reap a lot of the benefits from um, Dockerizing and putting our tools on top. So we, we're actually seeing more and more of that in, in more and more companies. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah the, the discussion actually with Solomon, uh, we we talked this morning is. Uh, he was like, oh, I don't know what Lego set we are. And I said, you know that like green flat piece <laughs> that you like can build everything on top of? So you can have your space set and your you know, castle and you know, all the pieces there. You want to be a platform that can build. It goes into one of the announcements you guys had today. It's the modernized traditional applications. Maybe walk us through a little bit what that means, you know, that mix of you know, the microservices versus traditional apps and how, how that, you guys see yourselves participating in, in customers' journey. Uh, right, so it, it, yeah, when we call this program, by the way, uh, it has a nickname, MTA. Uh, but you know, it's it's uh, like you said, what we've seen is um, uh, customers and users that want to have benefit of the, um, you know, across the board with the right new code, as they have more traditional apps with traditional stacks. And uh, what we came um, up with is is a way for you to move from kind of more traditional to the new and. Um, dockerizing really quickly, using our tool set really quickly. And in there, we one of the things we also announced today is a, a go-to-market um, and, and a, a program, basically a program that uh, helping customers to do that. And we ha have great partners that we announced today and we're I'm sure we're going to have even more with Microsoft, Avanon, uh, HPE, and Cisco. And um, what we're going to basically provide is a way for you very quickly to start seeing the benefit, taking a, a traditional app and within days, in fact, like five days, uh, you should be able to already uh, get it in a, in a modern state and start seeing the benefits uh, from that. And you know, it's, it's something that we're going to um, encourage customers to do and again, very quickly uh, see the benefits. In fact, we had, um, a customer today, Northern Trust, who's already been doing that, um, um, talking about the benefits they've been seeing, they've been seeing from this program. 
So, yeah. Mariana, um, in terms of developer enablement, that's everything to getting Dockerizing, to make Dockerizing a universal phenomenon for wrapping legacy systems, for refactoring existing code, for building greenfield applications. What does, uh, what will Docker do to continue to improve the experience of uh, Project Mobi as an enabler for your, your ISV ecosystem? Um, going forward, how do you see the experience of in front end, in front of Mobi evolving to enable greater simplicity and speed of development? Yeah, first of all, I have to say that one of the uh, magic, uh, uh, you know, the secret sauces of, uh, of Docker is our um, user experience and the way we made um, technologies sometimes that were already available super accessible uh, and, and super useful for developers and ops and users. So I would say that's definitely something that we have the DNA and, uh, and to do and uh, you know, in a project in, in Mobi, um, we see ISVs and companies and and then not on, it doesn't have to be a company, it could be like users, or it could be a company, they can come in and collaborate and really create um, a new uh, component or a new um, project from um, what, we're gonna, what we're going to put there and hopefully others as well is, is a whole set of his Lego uh, uh, building blocks that they can assemble. Are there any plans of Dockers to provide um, task-oriented skins or experiences on Mobi for different roles, I mean, different developer roles associated with you know, particular projects. You know, task, uh, wrapping in a legacy system is a different task, obviously, from uh, developing a greenfield containerized application. Um, so to what extent will there, will you evolve the tool to enable more task-oriented role-specific yeah, interfaces? Yeah, I would say, the, you know, as part of Mobi and across the company, yeah. we do have this realization that uh, it could be that uh, developers started to use uh, Docker first, but actually um, ops and even like we talked about traditional IT, it's pretty prevalent. So our idea, our thought is really to cater to all of these audiences, kind of understand, have a conversation with them and understand what exactly they right. need, what makes them productive. Uh, an example of what I mentioned with the MTA program, the, mo the modernized traditional apps, that one is targeted more towards, an, you know, uh, maybe an ops audience. Um, uh, you know, so like different, um, different things we do. We try to understand our audience and engage with them and see what what's going to make them most productive, both in terms of tool set and in terms of how we, uh, you know, bring it to to them. Right, right. Mariana, we, we, we had the opportunity to have some of the uh, you know partner keynote speakers on the cube. Uh, John Gossman on uh, from Microsoft yesterday. Uh, we had uh, Mark Cavage on uh, from Oracle here. Um, there's a lot going on. Maybe maybe give our audience just a little flavor as to some of the other partner activity going on here that we might have missed. Uh, you know. If, if we weren't watching close. Right, I mean, that was first start, and I think that we had the same conversation uh, last year, and just like explaining how important it is for us uh, that we work well with our ecosystem. It, it's a big part of our uh, plan and strategy, and, and, uh, and again, come from realization that uh, customers want to use uh, choice, different things, that we're not alone in the world, and we really want to engage with uh, a vast ecosystem. So you saw, uh, you know, from uh, cloud providers to uh, like uh, more on-prem infrastructure to ISVs, so, you know, to networking providers, storage providers. So, like a whole understanding of like, like wait, in order to re to be a, f a full platform, we really understand need to understand how to integrate and how to engage with that ecosystem and how to help customers uh, uh, have benefits of, of uh, you know the, the the entire thing combined. So we've been really um, looking at who are the uh, different um, leaders. Sometimes customers take us there. They're like, "Hey, please partner with this uh, uh, this company or that company." Understanding mapping of what is needed, and you know, and and kind of again, like I said, starting from cloud infrastructure, network storage, uh, management, monitoring, security. Uh, all the way to ISVs, but you know, I, I would uh, since you brought up the fact that Mark was here, Mark from Oracle. I do want to talk a little bit of that because I think that is is maybe even uh, a bit new and uh, unique. Uh, that we another thing that we announced today is um, the fact that we have Oracle uh, Dockerizing their apps and putting them in 
Docker store. That's and huge. That, that, is, that is big, and again, for us it's obviously big, but again, big for user. It's a very uh, easy way to get uh, uh, you know, software you really need, and not only that, we announced uh, several um, like several weeks ago a certification program. So the nice thing about that, if something is certified in store, you can really use that with a lot of trust. It's um, you know we, you know it's uh, been tested, it's secure. That we we made sure that it follow best practices. We made sure that there is support engagement uh, with uh, the publisher. So that's again geared towards. Um, uh, enterprises that really want to have the confidence of uh, downloading something from a store and just just using it. So uh, again, Oracle is kind of groundbreaking and putting their uh, software there, and uh, you know we're very excited about that. And uh, we think there's going to be more to come, and we uh, really um, looking forward to this like an, an amazing service for our users. Uh, who want to really start from components that exist and the components that they can trust and uh, be productive very quickly. You know, uh, I'm curious, how do you think of the Docker store in relation to things like the Amazon Marketplace or you know, many of your other partners have their own piece? There really is no you know, kind of like enterprise app store today, so what do you guys want to own? How do you integrate with partners as you look at that to you know, develop over time? Right, and for us, Docker store started uh, as an enabler uh, as we saw more and more uh, need from from users to um, to to, um, to to basically, I don't like. Hey, I want um, you know. Let's say I'll take since I talked about Oracle. I want to use a database. I don't want to go and Dockerize it again. If somebody already done it and they already prepared um, it and they already went through it, uh, why wouldn't I just reuse it? So this the the fact that you can. Uh, put things in this building block and then move them around, it also actually enables the, um, the idea that you can uh, reuse the same component between different users, right? So, so basically, you have here something that you can do once and many people can benefit. So that's the benefit we see. We st it started with official images uh, long, ago, long ago and we saw just unbelievable traction. Uh, for it, users really loved it. It makes them productive very quickly, and we wanted to expand it to a, a wider set of ISVs, a wider set of components, of a wider set of apps, and made them available. Uh, you know, so we right now see it as more as an enabler, uh, and what kind of again, it's one of the things that listening to our users, listen to our customers. Uh, we 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 saw that that's kind of uh, one of the things that will make them make them productive really quickly. What we one of the things we saw in in, in abundance here at DockerCon this year is uh, customers of you know Visa and MetLife and so forth up on stage talking about how they're using uh, Docker in their business for actual live applications. Um, in terms of partners, are you focusing on particular vertical industries in terms of partnership with ISVs and VARs? particular geographies. Um, give us a sense for where you're going in terms of diversification of geographies and industries in terms of your focus on partnerships. Yeah, and you know, and, and again, different um, different parts of the stack require different kinds of partnership. Yeah. Like on the south, on the south end of the stack, right, from on the infrastructure, uh, we're looking for partners that either provide on-prem or cloud infrastructure or they can yeah. provide set of plugins. Um, that integrate with us and set of tools that can be used with, with Docker to uh, complete and enhance the overall uh, experience of users using Docker, right? So that's kind of one set of partnerships that again, right. started from like hardware vendors to, to cloud to uh, different plugins. On the north side of it, as we look at it, it's like we just talked about the fact that we have top the application, the application services end of the stack is the north, right? Exactly, and gotcha. and all the way to the content, what you actually put inside, yes. and what you run, uh, we Data, also so forth and so exactly, on. Exactly, yeah. we we'll form uh, you know a, a set of partnerships there, and uh, making sure that we. Um, um, we're making sure that those components are available in store, those components are dockerized, that, that companies can uh, really use that. And you know, obviously Microsoft and is a huge partner for us in the OS and in other uh, Azure, other areas as well. And, and, and storage again, vendors with Veritas and so forth, so there's a fair amount of the data inside the ecosystem that absolutely. you're going to continue to well, develop data, with partners. Data, you know, you, you've seen a lot of that. And we, and we continue uh, partner uh, and 
um, right. seeing what, what's needed there, understanding also where, trying to predict where customers are today, where they're going to be maybe, what they will need um, a year or two from now and be ready for that. All right, so, so Mariana, that leads me to my final question. So okay. we know where you're going to be in Europe. You won't tell us yet the location of, of, of the uh, North American show uh, for next year, but you know, as you look at the ecosystem, how do you see that developing? You know, when, when we sit down with you a year from now, what, what, what do you hope to have as the progress? Yeah, so if we look at the exhibit hall, I, 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 I am hoping that it's, we're going to see even bigger exhibit hall with every single DockerCon. Um, and just not just uh, uh, for fun, but really it's kind of indicates the um, collaboration we have with the ecosystem. And I'm, uh, I'm, I would like us to be known as a, a trusted and productive partner for our ecosystem, mm -hmm. and a trusted and productive partner for our customer that um, kind of knows to work to work together with with all of these con constituencies to uh, have uh, amazing results. And like you said, we've seen customers and stages in the press releases that people say, I went from months of, the, you know, took me months to get a VM going, it takes me like seconds to get this now going. So you see the kind of productivity and uh, we would like to continue um, enhance it even more and get there fast, so. Right. Um, yeah, so. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So Mariana, always a pleasure to catch up with you and we've got a few more interviews left, two days of live coverage for Jim Cobielis and I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching theCUBE.